Hello dear students, welcome to your new session. Today we are studying NCRT 9th Standard Science Chapter 14 Natural Resources. Let's start the class. In the part 1, we have learned about air. In the part 2, we will study about water and soil. Our next topic is about water, a wonder liquid. Water is an inexhaustible natural resource. It occupies very large area of the earth's surface. Some amount of water exists in the form of water vapors in the atmosphere also. Most of the water on earth's surface is saline, salty water, that is salty water. Fresh water is found as frozen ice caps at the poles and on snow covered mountains. The underground water and the water in rivers, lakes and ponds is also fresh. All these are the fresh waters. What are the importance of water for living beings? Water is essential for living beings because it provides a medium for all the cellular process to take place. It is necessary for the transportation of substances from one part of the body to other part of the body. It helps to maintain body temperature. Then, it is required to maintain balance of salts within our body. Terrestrial life forms require fresh water because their bodies cannot tolerate or get rid of high amount of dissolved salts in saline water. Then, all reactions take place within our body and within the cells occur between substances that are dissolved in water. So, water is very important to our life. What do you mean by water pollution? It is defined as an undesirable change in the physical, chemical and biological quality of water due to addition of unwanted and harmful substances. These unwanted and harmful substances are called water pollutants. Water pollution adversely affects living organisms by making the water unsuitable for use. Then what are the causes of water pollution? Water dissolves the fertilizers and pesticides from agricultural fields and take them to the nearby water bodies where they cause harmful effects on aquatic life. Then next to cause dumping of sewage and other waste into water bodies adversely affect the water quality. Industries use water for cooling various machines and later releases hot water into water bodies. It also causes water pollution. This causes sudden change in the temperature of water body that affect the breeding of aquatic organisms. What are the effects of water pollution? Addition of undesirable substances to water bodies. Undesirable substances means fertilizers, pesticides, dirt, sewage, etc. All these mixed with the water making it unfit for consumption. As the amount of organic waste increases in water, Bacteria and other organisms multiply very fast by using the dissolved oxygen present in the water, which causes the deficiency of oxygen in the water. This lack of oxygen kills the fishes and other aquatic animals, which cause death of flora and fauna of water bodies. Flora means plants and fauna means animals of water bodies. Next effect is thermal pollution. Sudden marked change in the temperature range of water body in which the aquatic organisms are living can be dangerous for them or may affect their breeding. The next effect is human diseases. Water provides home to pathogens which causes infections to humans. Then how can we control this water pollution? Sewage and garbage generated by homes and industries should be treated properly before discharging into water sources. In this way we can protect water. It will reduce water pollution causing less harm to the aquatic life. If hot water generated by the industries is collected at a common place and then cooled before it is discharged into the water bodies, it will not affect the breeding capacity of aquatic organisms. In this way also we can control water pollution. Our next topic is about the soil. It is the portion of the outermost layer of earth, which is crust, which provides support for the growth of plants. Minerals present in the soil 
that supply a variety of nutrients to life forms. Then how soil formed on the earth? Soil takes long period of time to form. For thousands and millions of years, the rocks at the surface of the earth are broken down by various physical, chemical and biological processes. The end product of this breaking down is the fine particles of soil. Then some factors also responsible for the soil formation. The factors are sun, water, wind and living organisms. The sun heats up the rocks during the day so that they expand and during night these rocks cools down and contract. Since all parts of the rock do not expand and contract at the same rate, this results in the formation of cracks and ultimately the huge rocks break up into smaller pieces. Next factor is the water. Water helps in the formation of soil in two ways. Firstly, water could get into the cracks in the rocks formed due to uneven heating by the sun. Freezing of this water would lead to widening up of cracks later. Secondly, flowing water that wears away even hard rock over long periods of time. Fast flowing water often carries big and small particles of rock downstream. These rocks rub against each other and cause breakdown into smaller particles. Then next factor is the wind. It acts similarly as water. Strong winds also erode rocks down and carries sand from one place to another. Living organisms also influence the formation of soil. The lichens grow on the surface of rocks and release certain substances that cause the rock surface to powder down and form a thin layer of soil. Other small plants like uh, mosses grow on the surface of the rocks and cause further breakdown of rocks. Then what are the constituents of soil? Soil is a mixture of small particles of rocks, bits of decayed living organisms that is called humus. Then partially decomposed plants and animal matter. It also contains various forms of microorganisms. The main constituent of soil are minerals, air, water, organic matter and living organisms. Humus is a dark colored organic substance consisting of decayed plants and animal waste. It provides nutrients for plants and increases the ability of soil to retain water. Humus plays a major role in deciding the soil structure because it causes soil to become more porous and allows water and air to penetrate deep underground. The nutrient content of a soil, the amount of humus present in it and depth of the soil are some of the basic factors that decide which plants will grow on a particular soil. Need of soil for living organisms because it provides natural habitat for various living organisms for example bacteria, fungi, algae, earthworms etc which help to maintain the fertility of soil. All these are helping the fertility of the soil. Earthworms performs all its activity in the soil. It maintains the fertility of soil by releasing nitrogen rich excreta. It also helps in tilting the soil. It provides nutrients to all living organisms. Soil helps to bind the roots of plants to provide them encourage. The nutrients in soil are absorbed by the plants for their growth and development. Then what do you mean by soil pollution? Removal of useful components from the soil and addition of hazardous substances into soil is called soil pollution. It adversely affects the fertility of the soil and kills the diversity of organisms that live in it. Soil also loses its fertility by the continuous use of fertilizers and pesticides over a long period of time. This destroys the soil structure by killing the soil microorganisms that recycle nutrients in the soil. It also kills the earthworms which are helpful in making the humus rich. What do you mean by soil erosion? It is the removal and transportation of top soil, top layer of the soil 
from its original position due to factors such as strong winds or fast running rainwater. Soil erosion results in desertification or a reduction of soil fertility. Then what are the causes of soil erosion? Strong winds carry fine soil particles from one place to another. Then next cause is the heavy rains wash unprotected topsoil into the streams and river. Deforestation can also lead to soil erosion. Improper cultivation practices for a long time can cause soil erosion. Excessive use of insecticides and pesticides also cause soil erosion. How can we prevent soil erosion? By afforestation. Afforestation means planting more trees. It reduces soil erosion. Next is by step farming. Step farming is otherwise called terrace farming. Farmers form a series of steps by making horizontal strips supported by walls to catch the descending water. It gives the water sufficient time to percolate into the soil and nourish the crop. Then next by soil cover. This method involves the removal of excess rainwater through small drainage canal formed around the field. Next method to prevent soil erosion is by controlling grazing. Grasses tend to bind soil particles to prevent their erosion. If overgrazing is allowed, the grasses are uprooted and soil gets eroded. Therefore, excessive grazing should be prevented. Students, here is the end of the part 2, chapter 14, Natural Resources. Hope all of you understood well. Thank you and have a nice day.